Coming up on Mountain News this morning, federal, state, and local leaders gather in Bell County in hopes of building a stronger eastern Kentucky. And voters in Madison County will get to decide if the county will become wet or remain dry during the primary. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Well, y'all, looks like we made it to Friday. I'm Dakota Makris. Good morning to you. Thank you for waking up with us. Let's head on over to the birthday boy this morning. Brandon, happy birthday to you. Hey, listen, I'm still 39 until early this afternoon, so. Mm -mm. 39 and holding. 39 and holding <laughs> right now, so there you go. Enjoying the last, their yeah. final hours of 39. But thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And we're going to get into a forecast. It's going to be a little bit active a little bit later today, but right now, Fairly dry. Saw the moon on the way in this morning. A little fog out there. So just continue to watch that rain. Not quite to us just yet, but as we get deeper in the day, I think we'll start to see that Buffalo Mountain here in Perry County. 61 right now. Everybody else in the low 60s for the most part. Some mid 60s out there. Jackson, Prestonsburg, Pikeville, 66 there in Logan this morning. 67 in Monticello, but 50s in Clintwood, Middlesboro, Jacksboro, and I believe that's it, at least for the moment anyway. We'll see if Manchester makes it into the 60s here in a little bit. But dry for now. Scattered chances for showers and storms. And scattered is the key word to remember in that sentence because it's not going to be an all-day washout. But uh, keep your umbrella with you just in case. We'll have more on the forecast, including tracking off those uh, rain chances coming up here in just a little bit. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Federal, state, and local government officials, along with nonprofits gathered in Pineville, coming together in hopes of building a stronger eastern Kentucky. During the Partners for Rural Impact Community Forum, a number of leaders shared their successes, dreams, and discussed ways to revitalize the economy across our region. WYMT's Olivia Calfee was at the event yesterday. Many federal and local government leaders and nonprofits took the stage on Thursday, including Energy Communities IWG Executive Director Brian Anderson, who says their goal is to empower communities to take advantage of federal funding to help those communities thrive as the nation transitions to a clean energy economy. We have one premise, and it is not to leave communities behind. We are in the midst of an energy transition. In fact, I think the, for the last 50 years, coal communities have been in, in an economic transition uh, that has really accelerated over the last 10 years, and we're going to continue to see a transition. Rocky Adkins, Governor Andy Bashir's senior advisor, also shared his thoughts, saying true success is regions and communities working together. Those regions who have the same game plan that's going to be carried out day in and day out. And yes, we have our own individual needs and our own individual communities and counties. I get that. But the regionalism I've seen from Eastern Kentucky has come so far, so quick, to where people are working together from the Mountain Caucus to the governor's office to our federal agencies. And the Appalachian Regional Commission's federal co-chair, Gail Manchin, was also present who says her goal is to bring all 13 states in the Appalachian region together, creating more economic growth. That we'll start thinking of ourselves, yes, we are the Appalachian region. We are this mountain ridge that's very important in this country. So we're 423 counties and we're 26 million people. And the more we can start thinking in terms of what we can achieve as a region, I think will allow us to think bigger uh, about our projects and bigger about what we can mean to this country. Manchin also made a huge announcement saying ARC is awarding five Appalachian Kentucky area development districts $100,000 each. $100,000 is for them to be able to hire support people to help them do the capacity building in the community, to help provide that technical assistance to the communities. That was Olivia Calfee reporting the awards totaled up to $500,000. Gubernatorial candidate Ryan Quarles is making his last rounds of campaigning ahead of Tuesday's primary election. The Commissioner of Agriculture made a visit at the Love is Real Wellness Cafe in London yesterday. He says he has the best chance at winning the election and taking the fight to Governor Andy Bashir. And I'm the rule candidate in this race, and I feel like I've got the best chance of winning. And so we're going to ask Kentuckians to get out to vote. You can vote in person Thursday through Saturday, and again next Tuesday, May 16th. 
Quarles was also in Mount Vernon and Williamsburg yesterday, and he finished the day off with the stop in Adair County. Some of the other Republican candidates have released their plans from now until Tuesday. As we've mentioned before, Daniel Cameron and Kelly Kraft will not be back in Eastern Kentucky before the primary. Kraft is planning stops to Texas Senator Ted Cruz in Louisville and Richmond on Saturday. Somerset Mayor Alan Keck will have a 24-hour blitz on Monday. Keck will make several stops in the mountains, including London, Manchester, Painesville, and Jackson. State Auditor Mike Harmon says he will also make stops in Eastern Kentucky on Monday. Eric Dieters told us he will be staying in Northern Kentucky. Incumbent Governor Andy Bashir will look to win the Democratic nomination once again as he squares off against Pepe Martin and Jeff Young. Well, speaking of the governor, he and his wife Brittany took part in early voting yesterday. Both cast their ballots yesterday in Frankfurt. This is Governor Bashir's first re-election campaign. Over in Madison County, early voting uh, this primary includes a wet dry vote. It's a straightforward question on the ballot for voters living there. On the sample ballot, it reads, are you in favor of the sale of alcoholic beverages within Madison County, Kentucky? It is a question voters there have not seen in around 100 years. A lot of economic development stays away from dry areas in Kentucky intentionally. They stay out of those areas because it's viewed as an area that is antiquated, undeveloped, and hard to do business in. If the vote to make Madison County wet passes, it would not necessarily take effect right away. County looters say there will be logistics that will have to be dealt with before sales actually happen. The city of Richmond is already wet and Berea is moist, which is when alcohol can be sold only in certain situations. Well, thank you so much for getting your Friday morning started with the Sierra Mountain News this morning. Coming up, we take a moment to appreciate nurses across our region and the country who help keep us healthy. Scattered chances for showers and storms are on the menu today, especially the deeper we get into it. I'll track them for you in about three minutes.